Catching me in the wind But if Mickey Flynn should ever find me I'll throw me call shit all behind me And square off on that son of a bitch again He cracked up in a river too He beat me so they threw and through And so she or my unconscious train I won me healthy sheriff fights Well lucky son still happy life Since Mickey Flynn beat me dumb and lame Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Chiefs Talk Show on the Always Next Year podcast. I'm your host, Steve, here with Shane. Shane, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. I loathe Monday Night Football, second game. I fell asleep during, and it screwed up my parlay. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I fell asleep, too, but I had work in the morning. Well, you have I've, a job. I will also fully admit that I only watched the last 40 seconds of the Saints game. Are you sure? Yeah. Am I what? I was trying to say serious. What the hell was I trying to say? Shitting me? Serious. I combined the two. Are you, seri- are you seriously shitting me? Are you seriously shitting me? <laughs> that was crazy. That was a incredibly, incredibly... I was so happy when that went 58. I was like, oh, God's on my side. I can go to sleep. 58-yard field goal on my Monday night parlay? Yep. Nah. In- <laughs> incorrect. Yeah. Well, I was... I had too much hanging on it for fantasy, so I just wanted to avoid it in general. That's fair. I was like, I'll just watch Who'd this. Who you have going in that game? I had Drew Brees and Michael Thomas for me, and then the other team had Alvin Kamara. This is like my big money league, and I was already down. I lost that week in fantasy by four points, so it kind of sucks. But it doesn't matter because the Chiefs won. There you go. And kind of in handed fashion, which I didn't really fully expect. But what I did expect, Sammy Watkins, outstanding wide receiver for the week. I was right. Always listen to me. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is now our our last two Chiefs Talk segments. Something you stated was correct. Like, very correct. So it was Carlos Hyde going to Houston, and now three freaking touchdowns and two disgusting juke moves later. Oh, my God. It was insane. Or Sammy Watkins. I won't lie. I was kind of far away from the TV. I need to get my eyes checked again upgrade my glasses and i was like was that me cole hardman was that me? no <laughs> it was sammy Watkins. i'm like ah! shane was i right i had to text you i'm like yep yeah, sammy was Watkins was my outstanding guy right yep that was your outstanding player yep and he did extremely well and like all of his points came like the first quarter yeah well first quarter forced for, forced first half first half i'm pretty sure he had like 160 of his yards oh yeah and then uh yeah i think he had his last touchdown like the fourth quarter but um, it was a very good game for the offense. The defense looked like the defense. <sighs> I would say they looked slightly better than last year. They weren't giving up shitty runs. It was just passes by Gardner Minshew. Three podcasts in a row you get to mention Gardner Minshew. I know. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> it's was... great. He's got a great name. <laughs> honestly, he, he, he looked pretty good. He honestly did. But was it him or was it the Chiefs defense? Um, it's definitely a mix of both i I think that when you prepare as much as you probably do for a starting quarterback and don't at all have to consider a guy like gardner Minshew (laughs) coming in here and uh making any kind of immediate impact um you know i'm sure it changes things you know a little bit he did plus defensive coordinator's ass that's all i'm saying you can hate spagnol all you want and i will just say i'm hoping he's better than bob sutton was the final few years he was here because he was good at first and then just tailed off and i really appreciate him but nope not in the end. I was fully on board with firing him. <laughs> and I'll take Spagnola for Andy Reid recognition. Um, I don't think that's where I was looking for. but you The know, continued we're Andy Reid tree? Yeah, I guess. Something like that. Um, LeSean McCoy ended up leading the team in yards uh, for rushing. I was surprised by that, but good for him. Uh, Damian Williams had more carries, more catches. So keep Damian Williams on your fantasy team. He'll still be good for you. Um, Tyree did Hill. he not have like twenty yards rushing? Who Damien? Mm-hmm. He had six. Um, da, 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 da. He had yeah twenty six on thirteen yeah. carries, but a touchdown. That's all you want fantasy. There you go. It mean as long as we have that rotating back, someone's going to make a play. Please give Darwin Thompson a rush this this week. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tyree Kill, man, just signs a new contract, gets hurt. <laughs> yeah, man, Twitter was unkind to him. I'm Twitter sure they were. was unkind. Still All the karma him. birds coming out there, you know, stating, uh, oh, this man's him. terrible father, terrible partner, all this different stuff. It was um, the fucking mother. <laughs> <it> was, 
Uh, nah, nah, it sucks. It, it's crazy that in a game, like, two, like, the bigger players for each team, like, each hurt, like, the same portion of their body, I'll say. You know, the shoulder to collarbone. Yeah. Uh, Nick Foles, he's out to week 11 at least. And then Tyreek Hill. I'm pretty sure it's the same collarbone he hurt in 2014 or 15, too, which I... Nick Foles? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Nick Foles. Your dick wasn't big enough to save your collarbone. Yeah. It's a damn shame. Yeah, you try to do the measuring. You know, yeah, you throw it doesn't over the go top that high. Extra padding. Couldn't Do- swing it around. Couldn't swing go, it under. Nothing worked. It just doesn't go that high. It's not that big. <laughs> Super Bowl champion Nick Foles. Still love you. How um, can you not? <laughs> Tyreek Hill, though. Man, uh, his stuff's scary. Like, that's yeah, just it was strange. like it was like hurting like his sternum. sternum based, yeah, yeah. I'm like, how the fuck? Where the fuck is the sternum? Well, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that's all I can do. I'm like, where's your sternum? Because I broke my collarbone before. I'm like, where the fuck is your sternum? How's this like penetrate? It's like the connection point. I think so. It's like right here, and that little piece of whatever is like your chest plate, and oh, it's like okay. if it bends in, like I think they're in, afraid of it impaling something. Or so, like I don't, I can't even remember. The article I read was bizarre, but it just sounded scary as fuck. So. I don't want to read it because I assume there's pictures of like the insides of people, and I don't like that. No, there's no pictures of the inside <laughs> of anything. Obviously, okay. if there were, I'd be able to describe where this was on my body a little bit better. But Touché. instead, I awkwardly <laughs> just groped up on my own chest in front of you, <laughs> and I was like reacting with it on myself. I'm like, where is it? <laughs> um, but yes, um, the Chiefs won. Defense looked very lackluster. Um, but Frank Clark has more interceptions than Jalen Ramsey, so that's a thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> I thought about taking him as my breakout or outstanding standout uh, defensive player, but Juan Thornhill is my guy, Juan. and he led the team in tackles, so in a way, he kind of was. Um, next week is the Raiders, and I think that's a win. I think you have it as a win. Their second game's a loss. Yes, I have a win this week, and then I'm splitting that that series with them. So I think it's week 11 or 12. It's later. No, it's not week 12. They have a bye then. I had to check that for fantasy. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> um, I, I just think it, it's a win. And we're going to touch on the Raiders now. Did you watch any of that game? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, did. I watched like the first quarter. I'm like, God damn, they're going to fucking win. Like, I just knew. Um, like, just how I don't know. Like, like, I had the crowd, the, like their defense, and even their offense. I'm like, yeah, the Raiders are actually going to win this game. I was annoyed. So, did you do you remember last year's uh, first game for for Oakland either? No. All right, I didn't think you would, but it was the same kind of thing where the, it was just like a really methodical and very just well paced drive by by their offense and and Marshawn Lynch and just everything. And it was the camera just kept focusing on the arrogance and just of everything <laughs> of all the fans is. and everything. No, 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 not of the fans. The fans? Chucky, my friend. Oh uh, um, yeah, John Gruden. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and it was the same kind of feel for me, like right from the beginning. Like I, I just felt like Gruden's always been a, a good scripter of opening drives and and kind of first quarters. And so long as he can get that punch out of the way and have that early lead, I've always found John Gruden gets that punch out of the way. He's punching all game. The initial blow. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean like initial. literally, like oh. every good play, he's punching. It is true. Yeah. He is. He's quite active on the <laughs> sidelines there, uh, for a now like fifty three year old, right? Fifty four. I don't Who know. Knows? He looks like he's forty, but he's probably like sixty. Well, he was forty when he he was forty one when he won with the Bucks. Okay, that was I like two thousand two, so he's like fifty eight. Jesus Christ! All I don't. Right. Like, I don't even know if that was correct. I'm just, just gonna roll with it. You sounded <laughs> so confident. I'm not even gonna check the math. Uh, but yeah, so just watching the early parts of that game. Um, you know, uh, I felt like a lot of the passes were very safe passes, which is really good for a guy like Derek Carr, who just needs all yeah. of the... Fuck, it sucks. I mean, I swear, I feel like every receiver has like a two-route tree, and that's fucking it. And everything was a safety cushion, and just, you know, trying to create a, a little bit of space over the middle of the field, you know, nothing longer than like eight, ten yards out yeah. of these passes, but it worked. Um, I, I think, however, I think it was just more so... Denver just did not look ready on either side of the football to play that game. The defense no, just looked didn't. bad, and the offense just had just they just looked disconnected. So I mean, Joe Flacco's your quarterback. Joe Flacco's not a good quarterback. Like he's anyone not. who sits there and continues to think that man is a good quarterback, you're wrong. He's done. Like he 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 needs to like just fade away into coaching. Uh, he probably would be a good coach. Yeah, yeah. honestly, he, he, he could be an elite coach. He could be an elite backup quarterback. Like he could be the next. He doesn't have as good of hair. 
but it could 100% be the next McCown. Just, <laughs> so, so you're saying he should have stayed with the Ravens. He's basically an offensive coordinator. He, he should have stayed with you the Ravens. You can't stay with the Ravens in that in that. I know, the cap and everything. No, not know. even the cap. Just the fact, like, you can't... I don't <laughs> think that you should, as a you know franchise quarterback, fade away into your second career as a franchise backup quarterback for the entire NFL. That, that just pass along ho of a quarterback... You can't start that process in your... I would love to see it, and I can't wait to find out who's going to be the first one to do that. It should be Eli Manning. <laughs> it should be. There he came. Well, they took him out in the fourth quarter. Yeah, that's stupid. They don't I know laughed so hard doing. at that process. I was like, I wow. I even know that happened. Oh, yeah. They, yeah, they put in Daniel Jones. I, I uh, got so Fumbled, drunk. I think, on his first drive. Second drive. Oh, good for him. He, he was so hyped in the preseason off his one drive. <laughs> yeah. Fuck the Giants. Um... But let, let's go back to the Chiefs. And what I was thinking about was I, I got so drunk during the game. <laughs> I know, because you stopped answering and responding to things. <laughs> yeah, I'm not good at responding to texts, especially when I'm drunk. But that's especially what when I mean. I'm sober. You know, I'm just not good at answering texts. It's true. Um, but I one one moment at the bar was I, like, I was audibly cheering for the Eagles at one point. Everybody at the bar was confused. And I was like, I got money on them. I got money on them this year, this game. You, it's going to happen more. They're like, okay, how are the Chiefs doing? It's right over here, over here, over here. I'm putting all the TVs in it where they all are. And they're like, oh, okay, they're doing all right. And I'm like, yes. Fast forward to Patrick Mahomes II walking off with an ankle injury. I'm actually at the bar at this point, And usually I'm at a table away from it. And I see it happening. And I scream, No. So loud, everybody was looking at me. Did you think that it was like Donovan McNabb 04 ankle again? No, no I didn't even see the play. Like, I was ordering a drink, and then I look up, and he's walking off, and I'm like, this It didn't is... look that bad. But, like, all I could think of was this is all because, like, I did that, like, semi, like, pray last show. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, like, only because I slightly mentioned it. This is why this is happening. So, this is on me. I'm sorry, Patrick. <laughs> this is my fault. Because, yeah, it came out that he he, gen- he did play the remainder of that game with an actually sprained ankle. It wasn't just one of those, like, I just rolled it, but I'm good. Yeah. Um, yeah, sometimes you roll it and you sprain it and you're good. Well, when you're a man. That's correct, man. <laughs> Me too. I remember. <laughs> 12 years old. Little shame. Playing basketball. Why, you ask? Because I'm short, fat, and white. I made it work. I rolled my ankle, put a bag of snow on it, because that's the time of year that it was. A bag of snow. A bag of Not snow. Not just snow, like you literally had a bag. Put a bag of snow. That's damn right. Wawa <laughs> bag, I remember. Actually, it was a 7-Eleven bag. I apologize. 7-Eleven, I don't want to lie to the listeners of Chiefs Talk <laughs> at AMYP. Uh, but yeah, man, you just suck that shit up and you go, just like Mahomes. We're basically the same person. No, you're not. I mean, he's can't throw the ball taller, like he's got better hair, yeah. the crazier voice. No, nah, you got a better voice, but... Other than that, I mean, we both have a cannon <laughs> for an arm. One of us throws a baseball. Okay. With accuracy, okay. I should okay. say. Yeah. yeah, he had a terrible baseball time. <laughs> uh, what they were saying, though, is um, he's going to be playing on like, this baseball diamond at Oakland, and he's like, yeah, it's, I'm finally going to play where my father played. <laughs> Hopefully he doesn't fuck up. I don't think he will. He'll be fine. Yeah, he'll be fine. He'll throw four touchdowns, 400 yards. Standout player. <laughs> Can't say Mahomes. We're leaving Mahomes out of this every year, every week, every year. Leaving Mahomes out of it? I am... Uh, I am... I'm going to go with LaShawn McCoy, but I'm going to say he makes a greater impact on the pass-catching side this time uh, as opposed to his okay. 70 or 80 he rushing had, yards. He had one catch for 12 yards. Yeah, so I, I'm going Give to see guess. that. I'm going to say six catches for... Wow. I'm going to say 60 yards and a touchdown. Okay, because um, Damian Williams had the six catches, so you think they're going to roll reverse, you know, let uh, Damian gets more... I've just always found LaShawn McCoy... Actually, I can't McCoy even say that. that. Damian had more... Rushes then Lashawn. Didn't he what fifteen carries? Thirteen for twenty six. Yeah. Not a huge stat line, but he had the touchdown. Keep him a fantasy. <laughs> You're just gonna keep on saying that. <laughs> I am. This is the Chiefs fantasy show. It is now. Um. So that's who you got for offense. Uh. Yes. Yeah, so who you got? Oh, man, Travis Kelsey only had three catches for eighty eight yards. So like, it's weird to say like this tight end, best tight end in the league, had three catches for. He only had three catches for eighty eight yards. I think this is the week that he gets six for like 112 and three touchdowns. Three touchdowns? He's just going to rape the Raiders. <laughs> it's the rape Raider week. All right, I support it. <laughs> I support it. Um, <laughs> Who you got on defense? Uh, I'm going to go Anthony Hitchens. Anthony uh, Hitchens? I, I just hate that guy because he was a cowboy. <laughs> well, I'm going to take him. I think he, 
I don't remember his stat line now. I just remember two he had, he had five explosively tackles. good tackles. He had, he he had, had five seven tackles. total, five solo, and he had half of four loss. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that uh, in a Spags defense, the linebackers are, are fairly versatile, always have been. Um, you know, and, and I feel like they'll find different ways, different blitz schemes and packages that will uh, open up some, some good stat lines there for that good linebacker score. Yeah, I don't see it, but, you know, I appreciate it. That's fair. You've been right every <laughs> single episode of the show, so at this point I'm just here to be Watch. wrong. Kelsey does get three touchdown catches. If he gets three <laughs> touchdown catches, I'm going to be fucking ecstatic. <laughs> Do you have him fantasy? I do. Okay. Um, defense, I'm going uh, Honey Badger. Tyron Mathieu. And I think he is picking off Derek Carr at least once, and I think he is going to get one more turnover, whether it's a fumble force or a recovery. So the Chiefs are getting at least two two turnovers this game. Um, I can see it. I can see it specifically because I still don't trust whatsoever. Derek Carr sucks. He's terrible. It's going to happen. I still can't. Man, so <laughs> it's like two or three years ago, Donald was in our fantasy league, and he just loved the Raiders, loved Marshawn Lynch, loved you know everything. Derek Carr. And this is this is well, this is what happens when you rape your friends. So <laughs> metaphorically, trade speaking, rape? Are we talking about trade rapes. Trade rapes. All right. This is what happens. So I wanted Julio uh, <laughs> badly, and <laughs> I traded him uh, Derek Carr and uh, I traded him one of the Cincinnati Bengals running backs at the time. Let's just go with Gio Bernard. It wasn't. No, I wouldn't have traded him because I have a soft spot for that guy. I think it was Dixon. Um, his, Mixon? Mixon. Uh, this would have been last year. Was it last year? I think Joe Mixon was a rookie last year. I don't think so. Maybe you, you probably – maybe it was Jer- – let's just go with Jeremy Hill. Let's go with that. We'll roll with Jeremy Hill. It doesn't really matter. Whatever it was, I did that. <laughs> Traded for Julio Jones and another wideout that I can't remember at this point. Um, but everyone was pissed off. And then <laughs> – How did the commissioner accept Julio this? Jones. That's true. <laughs> Julio jo- I'm the commissioner, by the way. <laughs> Julio Jones uh, had his worst career year, so it was two years ago, yeah. Typical Shane fantasy life. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. We're going to talk more about fantasy and fantasy trade rapes in Whiskey Whiskey Ramble, which we'll be recording in two days on Friday. Yep. Because oh, I got measurable some. bet lines. Yep. Well, we'll no, talk. you did okay. Oh, I did well. Yeah. So stay tuned to see what I did. There you go. <laughs> Eagles fans will like it. I thought it was a fucking... It doesn't matter. Monday night just screwed me. <laughs> yeah, that's why I didn't touch it. I was going to, but I was locked out. So, all right. We'll talk about that as well. <laughs> um, fuck, I got sidetracked and I forget what I was going to say about this game. Um, <coughs> mm, sorry. Four beers. And we're going to go to the Flyers rookie game, so Jane will have to handle me. That's true. Um, Frank Clark tweeted out, more interceptions than Jalen Ramsey, which is why I had to say it, because it's <laughs> fucking hilarious, and it is true. Um, I still can't get over Gardner Minshew, though. Like, Gardner Minshew, of all people, six-round quarterback. What what six-round quarterback has ever produced in the NFL? That's cute. <laughs> I believe 199th overall pick is still going strong at 87 years old. Okay. So, he is, but he was terrible in his first week. I think it was like two for five or like 40 yards. His debut. What's this now? Tom Brady. Oh, okay. <laughs> we have to name it. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay, sorry. There's a big difference between 178th overall, 199th overall. Huge difference. But also, do you see all the shit on Twitter? It's like Gardner Minshew is literally Uncle Rico. No, I did not, but that's brilliant. Yes, because he that's looks so just funny. Like him. <laughs> he does actually just look just like him. And he could probably throw a ball over the mountains. Probably. He doesn't need time travel. Doesn't need time treadle. Um, oh man! All right. Well, was, there was one more thing we had. I can't remember it. Um, um, besides me freaking out over Patrick Mahomes rolling his ankle. Oh, there's no look pass. Yeah, screw that guy. I what? was so angry. <laughs> what? I. All right. So I don't blame you. I was angry too. Uh, it turns out. So I lied to you in when I texted you that um, I would have. I made two really poor life decisions, one of which was not playing Deshaun Jackson in his first Only home two game. in your life? <laughs> With my fantasy lineup. Beyond <laughs> okay, that, it's okay. a mess of, of, of life over here for, for Shane. Um, but I did not start Deshaun Jackson, and I would have had to have started Deshaun Jackson uh, in order to win as well. But uh, 
but yes, I needed that Kelsey touchdown uh, at, <laughs> at one point. And so I thought when I sent you the text that Patrick Mahomes cute no look bullshit cost me a fantasy week. Uh, it didn't. It didn't help me, but it wasn't the ultimate. Uh, the ultimate nail in that coffin. But do you care that he's he's making this a regular part of his game right now? <laughs> I'm hoping that he learns from this. Okay, like, this isn't preseason. Like this is, you know, yeah, this shit matters. That's what and I'm saying. And like Travis Kelsey was completely wide open. Wide, like you lost that pass. Like yeah. I understand to like maybe look a linebacker off, which is yeah, what a normal quarterback would do. Not a superhuman like Patrick Mahomes the second. No, they they wouldn't no look. <laughs> so they wouldn't no look. But like loft that up there, man. He was I know. wide yeah. wide open. I think uh, he was trying to go with it. I don't remember like the score of the game at the time, but like it, you you just got to go for that guarantee. Yeah, I and did laugh. He said he owes him. He owes him like lunch or something. Was it lunch? All right, we'll yeah, roll with that. But it, you know, it, it's funny that they can joke about it. I, I appreciate that. But like, everybody was saying it like in the off season. Like he's trying these more and more. Like training camp, preseason. Yeah. And, like, there's a whole fucking commercial with him and Favre. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. I think it's a commercial. It's either a commercial or. Yeah, something. I don't know. They set up the, yeah. the trinet there. At the end, is it him pouring ketchup on a steak? It's not him pouring ketchup on a steak. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no. That, 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 it did irritate me, but at the same time, I'm like, nah, we're going to win this game. You're like, you know, one mishap, it's fine, but I would reserve it for like a more plausible, like a second down play. Not, not like yeah, a red really zone. Yeah, I don't really think the red zone opportunity yeah, is not the time a red to zone do it. play. You know, it's like I said, he's he's probably the only quarterback in the NFL that, that you should trust doing something like that at any point right. on the field. But at yeah. the same time, I mean, wide open in the red zone, probably not the time to do it. Yeah. Maybe it, midfield, second and six. There's your time. Yeah. So um, after week one, were you thinking, going into week one, were you thinking like Patrick Mahomes, like the whole like, the league will figure him out. Mm-mm. No. Um, I was thinking they could have, but at the same time, his improv and adaptability. That's the thing. He's so, just way too good at it. He's still like, rolling out and still finding these plays like on improv, and he's always going to, and he's going to be the best quarterback in the league forever. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let, let's, let's go with that. Um, I think it's a combination thing. I, I think that when... When Andy Reid made the decision to draft Donovan McNabb instead of uh, Ricky Williams, and he wanted the franchise quarterback there, Donovan had an improbability about him that was made, that made him special early on. It also made him very vulnerable, uh, you know. And, and as we saw, you know, his body would break down and he would get himself into trouble. So their philosophy with Donovan at the time was obviously to sit there, bulk him up some, make him more of a pocket passer, and only utilize. Is that his why he money. looks so fat? Uh, yeah, that, uh, it's, yeah, it's part of it. Um, you know, also depression for being constantly fired from jobs for trying to rape the females. No, I meant Donald McNabb. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but, uh, I think that there was something to have been learned about that process. There was something very unique and special about Donovan McNabb in his younger years where I felt like there was an extent to go about protecting him and, and curtailing some of his riskiness. Um, and they went too far. And he now has a quarterback that is infinitely more talented than what that of, of Donovan McNabb was with a Patrick Mahomes the second. And hundred percent. I think the biggest thing for this <coughs> that pairing for the Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes pairing is to not change his game too much. And they didn't, at least not through through one week. As you mentioned, right. his escapability is still there, his his willingness to break the pocket and get out. Um it's still there and his you know he's very elusive back there he's slippery for a really strong kid and his his arm strength's unreal like I, he could roll out to the opposite hash as much <laughs> as he wants and throw across the fucking football field the way that no one ever should on his back foot he can <laughs> and it doesn't matter he's got a rocket for an arm yep um yeah so I, for me i didn't fear this league figuring him out and even if they do they can figure him out all they want i still think he's going to beat him yep he's just that fucking good he just might go from Number one to like top three. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's just going to stay at number one. As long as he's healthy and out there, he, he's going to be number one. Please stay healthy. He's going to go all, all for like three plays next week now. Because <laughs> I be mentioned healthy. it. Just stay healthy. <laughs> um, last thing is 
gun to your head, who would you rather have starting a, starting a quarterback for your starter? Your starting backup quarterback. I start, what the fuck are you talking about? That was dumb. Gun to your head. Backup quarterback has to start for your starter. Okay. Matt Moore or Coy Detmer? Yeah. Yeah. It's Matt Moore for me. I, I think you have to think about it because you're just thinking about the neck beard, aren't you? The, the <laughs> full on Wolfman neck beard is beautiful, by the way. There, there is his entire body is connected by just hair. It's insane. Um, I am going to specifically say if he can be pre snapped elbow in San Francisco, I'm taking Coy. Yeah, I, I'm never taking Coy Demmer in anything. Besides maybe my holder. If He's I'm a fantastic, fantastic holder. <laughs> and clipboard um, holder. And, you know, shot in the dark, what do you think the score is going to be this week? That's the last thing I have. We also have to pick an NFL Rookie of the Week. Oh, right, you know, all right, let's um, do that first. Rookie of the Week for the NFL. Who you got? Uh, I am taking Marquise Hollywood Brown because I saw him just fucking annihilate Texas's defense for a couple of years over there in Oklahoma, <laughs> and I dislike him so much. I do have a little bit more respect for him that he doesn't go by Hollywood Brown now. He goes by his actual <laughs> name, Marquise Brown. Um, that, but, that is uh, good. His very first two touches as an NFL wideout uh, were two bombs uh, for <laughs> touchdowns, and all he did was catch two more bombs for like nearly 200 yards and two touchdowns in the day. Yeah, he um, still had, didn't have quite a Sammy Watkins game. He did but not still. have the Sammy Watkins game, but I will say my only concern with him is, one, I still don't for the life of me trust Lamar Jackson. He's not a quarterback, despite how fantastic he looked. He did my look good. Some concern, of the passes looked real good. Some of the passes look fantastic. His release is getting so much quicker and shorter. It's beautiful right now. And I'm sad to say that because I hate him. <laughs> um, but uh, they were going up against the fucking Dolphins, which is not a football team anymore. Not um, anymore. So we'll see if he's able to do it again this week. I would say that you should you should say he's, he's, he's the real fucking deal. Um, <laughs> like I said, I saw it happen. I always had some curiosity about it because he's a big 12 receiver and you know i dislike them um <laughs> i dislike all of them because texas never produces wideouts really what's their best one roy williams maybe oh, okay so but that was just like longevity of a career he's not an actual fucking good <laughs> receiver um but uh all right so my yeah, marquis goodwin right now he's pretty good yeah sure me i like him i am my saying the rookie of the week is going to be gardner Minshew. Just to keep on saying that name. That, and he is going to continue going at his pace. He's going to do just a solid game, and the Jaguars will probably beat the Texans because of Gardner Minshew. And Fortnite yeah, will be more involved. That's not happening. It is. That is not going to happen. It is. You're out of your goddamn mind. Want to place a bet on it right now? I will place a bet on that right okay. now. All right, 20 bucks. 20 bucks. All right. All right. All right, the shake is on. Shake is on. I got Jaguars winning. So we're, doing, we're not doing spread, right? Just straight up? No, straight up. All right, straight up. That's fine. All right. It's a dumbass bet by you. Oh, no. Jaguars are going to win. Gardner Minshew is leading the way. Gardner Minshew is not leading the way. <laughs> Jesus. After the way that they lost that game after coming back to uh, or blowing that lead. Uh, well, no. Deshaun Watson's hurt. Deshaun Watson's great. <laughs> he is great. <laughs> I just read that he went to the, like, the medical tent like three times. He always goes to the medical tent three times. I think it's like a lower back thing. I think he's just normal kicking. <laughs> I, I think it would help him. It would help a lot of NFL players. It probably would. <laughs> That's why they keep getting caught like Patrick Chong. <laughs> <laughs> that was a whole part of our never to be heard whiskey ramble segment of athletes who got yeah. caught in the cocaine. Right. It was. <laughs> Always the hint at it. Good job. So that's it. All right. Shameless plugs. All right. Predict a rough rough estimate of the score for the Chiefs Raiders game at Oakland. Four twenty five start. Um I am gonna go thirty eight uh, I'm gonna say thirty eight twenty four. I think it's a high-scoring game. Chiefs win. Chiefs win. I'm going 45 to 30. Chiefs win. All right. So yep. if you have fantasy players <laughs> for either of these teams, by all means, start them. If you all oh, like the very few listeners to this podcast so far, this actually, show, this show, we had a bunch of like on-demand plays on this one, like people who don't subscribe to us, but they were like, "Ooh, a Chiefs show? Let me play it." So we have like, I think it was. Like, 22 people just clicked into this without subscribing to us just to listen to this show. Sweet. Sounds good. So we're doing well. So if you drafted me Cole Harmon, like I said to, and his zero spot kind of derailed you, it's going to go up. Tyreek's out. Me Cole's coming in. Mm -hmm. So he's going to do well this year, this 
week. These next four to six weeks while Tyreek's out. So keep on keeping on with him. Keep him on your bench. He'll have this one good week. He'll start him next week. He'll have another good one. I fully believe it. I support that. Yeah. Shane, you got anything else? Uh, that's it. Please, everyone who listens to this, remind Steve and me that we made a twenty dollars bet because Steve's drunk and I have a tendency to forget. That no, I'm gonna bets. remember. It. Um, <laughs> unless, of course, whatever we just bet that I've already forgot, Jacksonville. Unless Jacksonville wins, and don't remind us. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, and then definitely tune into Whiskey Ramble this week as we will talk about our uh, our absurd betting lines and the fact that Steve did much better in Week One than I did. My other final thought here is while you are watching. NFL football this Sunday. Do yourself, do your family, do your guests a favor. Go to Just Food. 215-794-FOOD. 215-794-3663. Treat yourself. Take it home. Visit our guy over there, Asian Rob. Uh, They have two in-store locations. They have one at Buckingham Green Shopping Center. It's just beyond Peddler's Village. They have another one at the Delvel Market in New Britain, PA, if you guys are familiar with that area. Uh, Have them whip up a platter of just anything tell him to pick five things off his own menu and cook them for you and you stop by pick them up and you will not be disappointed pick foods that you can pronounce pick foods that you can't pronounce everything is fucking <laughs> delicious at just food so again that is just food 215-794-FOOD 215-794-3663 treat yourself take it home all right so that is the end of the chief's talk show here on the will always next year podcast i almost said whiskey ramble i'm just so used to doing that one it's true. Well, yeah. this is a new show for us. Yeah, it is. Testing yeah. the waters. I'm still still new to this on this end, but um, not really. I'm just new to doing a new show. That's not Whiskey Ramble. But also, thank you for listening. Listen to Whiskey Ramble as well, because it's a lot more entertainment. We'll be talking about our bets, <laughs> talking about some other bullshit that's happened in our lives. You'll probably enjoy it. So It's honestly, it's fantastic. It is just to give you everything you need to know. It's the most listened to AMYP podcast. I'm here to do well. There you go. Just like Patrick Williams II in the NFL. Here to be the best. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Have a wonderful time, day, night, whatever time you're listening to this. A plain man I used to be. Revered and feared through Killarney. Now I'm back to hitching with the wind. But if Mickey Flynn should ever find me, I'll throw me caution all behind me and swear I fall on that son of a bitch again. He cracked a bit of river too. He beat me Sunday through and through. And so she go to my unconscious rain. Flynn, beat me down and lame.